Okay, so I hope you like your tomato guy so far. You know, one thing that I didn't do is I forgot to do the inside of his eye here. So I'll leave that up to you if you want to pop in a little gradient there. Maybe make a blue eye or a green eye or whatever you'd like there. But what I'd like to do is take a look at some of the text here around our tomato guy here. So we have rotten tomato here. We want to put a nice gradient on our letters here. Now, all of these letters have been outlined. What that means is it's not editable text. It's been converted to objects here. And they're all grouped here as well. So what we'll do here, I'm going to ungroup the word rotten here. You can use your object menu if you like, or I'm going to hit Control-Shift-G or Command-Shift-G on the Mac. And I'll start with my first letter here, the letter R. And what I want to do is I want to use the same gradient that I'd used inside my tomato here in my text. So luckily, that's still sitting over on my gradient palette here for me, so I can just click on it there. However, one thing that I haven't shown you is what if I want to store this gradient and use it in the future, maybe in the same file or maybe in a different document? Well, it's really easy. All you have to do is take this little gradient swatch here and drag it up into your swatches palette, and that stores it there for me inside my swatches. And your swatches are saved with the file. So what I could do is open up this file later on in the future, maybe a week from now or a month from now or whatever, and that same swatch would be sitting there waiting for me. So it's probably a good idea to save your swatches. In fact, I'm going to go back to my green leafy top here. Maybe I want to reuse this gradient somewhere else in my document. So I'll do the same thing. I'll take it here and drag it up into my swatches palette and store it there for future use. In fact, I think what I'll do is put both of my gradients side by side here so that I have them. Okay, so back to our text. So I'll go back to my letter R here. If I want, I can use my gradient tool, which you've seen already, and I can adjust my gradient here, maybe give it some kind of drama here, maybe something like this. There we are, looking pretty good. I could go and single click on all the other letters here and reapply by hand the same gradient. That's going to take a while. So let's speed things up a little bit. I'm going to go to my black arrow tool if you want. You can just hit your V key on your keyboard. I went and clicked on the tool myself. And I'm just going to hold down shift and click on all of my letters all the way across. Rotten there. And I'll go and grab my eyedropper tool on my toolbox and I'm just going to single click on my letter R and that duplicates the gradient over for me. But you can see that it's not going in the same direction. It copied the fill, which is fantastic, but it didn't copy the same direction. So here's my dark red at the top and my orange or my scarletish type color at the bottom. So I can go and grab my gradient tool here and adjust all of the selected letters all in one shot until I have something like this happening. Looks pretty good. We'll go and do the same to the tomato down at the bottom here. So I'll highlight my letters here. If you want, you can ungroup. The reason why we ungrouped earlier is because I wanted to show you how to use the eyedropper tool to copy gradients. But you know what I can do is I can apply the gradient all in one shot to one single group. And the neat thing about applying a gradient to a single group is I get this nice uniform tone happening all the way across here. I'll grab my gradient tool here, click and drag. And now I have something like that happening. Looks pretty good. Now, I'm not 100% happy with it. It looks pretty good, but my exclamation points down at the end here, they're not getting any of the scarlet in here. So how am I going to fix that? Well, unfortunately, I have to go back to my Move tool, highlight everything, and then ungroup everything. Control-Shift-G or Command-Shift-G on the Mac, and then individually select them, and go back to my Gradient tool, and then adjust the gradient angle for those individual letters. So it's up to you, depending on how you want to do it. You can do them all in one shot, or you can do them individually. I have to be honest, even though it takes a little bit longer, I like going individually because that way I get sort of this customized gradient happening on every single letter all by themselves. Say something like that. I missed my O here. I left my A originally because I thought it looked pretty good, but looking at it in comparison to all the other letters. Didn't look too good. There's working with gradients on some text. 